Hello and welcome to another Every Tuesday tutorial. Last week, Sarah sent me a message and asked if I could do kind of an overview uh, of layer masks in Photoshop. So masking can be a pretty confusing thing and I totally get why because I was personally scared of it all through college and it wasn't until after I graduated that I fully embraced masking and I've never looked back. It's a great way to easily edit and adjust your photographs um, and it's very non-destructive so it's the best form of editing in case your creative dire director ever needs any tweaks you can always go back and do it very quickly and impress them with how fast you are. So I've got three examples of how to use layer masks here and I just want to show you them really quick and then we'll go through them one by one. Um, I've got kind of three different types to show you that will give you a general sense of how to use layer masks the best. So this is the first example. Uh, you can see that only the typography is slightly masked right here so it appears as though the type is behind the dog's nose. The second example, let me show you what it looked like. This is the original photograph. And then I added a hue saturation adjustment layer. And you'll notice that the entire background kind of got punched up a little bit, but the gentleman's face did not. His skin color remained natural. Um, and that's because I masked it out of that hue adjustment layer. And if I disable this, you'll see, this is what it looked like before the mask, which we cannot use this ever. So with the mask, you can see now it's normal again. And then the final example, you'll notice that this pelican uh, is very vibrant and it seems as though it's, he's coming forward towards you and that's because of a levels adjustment layer. If I turn it off, this was the original photograph and you can see with the levels adjustment, this did not get applied to the entire photograph, but it did get applied just to the pelican. So it's kind of a reverse of the previous example and I'll explain how to do each one pretty quickly. Okay, so we'll start with this Dog Days of Summer photo. And I just typed out Dog Days of Summer, so I don't need to do that again, but I'm gonna remove this mask, so we're kind of all on the same page. All the photographs that I'm using for these are totally free, and I'll leave links to all of them in the video description. And this font that I'm using right here is called Evolith uh, Clean Regular, and I'll leave a link for this as well. Okay. So we know that we want the mask only on days because it's just this one portion of the D that we want to mask so it appears behind the dog's nose. So I'm over here on the text layer and I'm on days. And all we want to do is click this little icon down here for mask. And the most important thing to remember whenever you're masking is black conceals and white reveals. Okay, black conceals means black hides and white reveals. So when you're using masks, you're always gonna paint in white or black. And what's being concealed and what's being revealed is determined by the layer that you're on. So since I'm on the type layer, if I paint in black, the type will be concealed. If I paint in white, the type will be revealed. Got it? All right. So I'll show you and it'll make more sense when you see it visually if you're a visual person like me. So I just switched this to black. Um, I hit B on my keyboard to activate my brush. And if you want to change the hardness of your brush, you can do it right here. I want a semi-hard brush, but I still want a slightly soft edge to it. So that's why I'm kind of in the 65 range. And then you can adjust the size here or you can uh, adjust the size with your keyboard hitting either the open bracket um, to make it smaller or the closed bracket to make it larger. You can see it's smaller, larger. Okay, so I'm using the black right now, which means if I paint, it's concealing, it's removing the type because I'm on the type layer. If I paint in white, it's revealing the type layer. I'm gonna zoom in here and I'm gonna reduce, I'm gonna reduce the opacity on this so I can kind of see the dog's nose as I'm drawing over here. So with this layer selected, I'm just gonna come over here and change the opacity to 50%. Now I can see where the dog's nose is and I'm gonna reduce the size of my brush slightly. All right, so if I hit X on my keyboard, I can switch back and forth between black and white right here, you can see. So I'm gonna paint with black because I wanna conceal the D. So I'm just gonna paint along the dog's nose. And I'm just using my mouse super quickly. Okay, now I'm going to up this to 100. And you can see I got a little bit of white right here from the background. So I actually need to, con I need to reveal more of the type. Um, so I'm just going to hit X on my keyboard to get the white. And now I'm going to reveal more of the type right here. 
All right, so that's mask number one, probably the easiest form of a mask. And you can see the little black dots here. That it's kind of dictating to you that there is a mask right there, and that's kind of where it's located on the entirety of the artboard. Okay, next example. Let me remove this completely so we can start together. So this is kind of a, a dark, kind of flat, a uh, little bit unsaturated image, and we wanna punch it up a little bit. So I'm gonna come over here to my adjustments palette. And if you don't see this, you can get to it by going window adjustments. And it's extremely important. I can't stress this enough. Do not, if you do this right now, don't ever do it again. Uh, a lot of people, and it's a terrible like college habit, I think, um, add adjustments by going window adjustments. But the bad thing is, is whenever you do any of this, if you make these adjustments over here, it's permanent. Once you do it, there's no going back. If you do it by using an adjustment layer, you can always go back. So that's a non-destructive form of editing. This is an extremely destructive form of editing, so don't do this. All right. So in my adjustments palette, I'm just going to click on this hue saturation icon. And now you can see it's created a layer, so I can always uh, come back to it. So say I wanted to change something, all I have to do is click on this little icon. I'm back to my settings, and I can change whatever I want. So I'm just going to pump up the saturation a little bit and maybe make it a little darker. And that looks great. Everything looks great except for this gentleman's face. Um, you can see that it looks like he got a little too much sun. So we need to make his skin normal, but keep the punched up feel of everything else. So you can see whenever you use an adjustment layer, you get a mask. And right now, because it's white, everything is revealed. So we need to conceal this adjustment because we're on this layer and we paint in black, we're removing or concealing this adjustment. So I'm gonna hit B on my keyboard and I'm gonna make sure it's black over here on the top and I'm gonna increase the size of my brush. So now when I paint black, I'm concealing, so it looks like I'm removing that adjustment because that's the layer that I'm on. I'm just gonna do this really quickly with the mouse. Now you can see if you look over on that layer, where the mask is, you can see the black being painted in. Okay, so that looks much better than this. So that's how to um, apply a mask to a portion of the photograph with the rest of the photograph having that adjustment. So we're gonna do the exact reverse with this pelican. We want the entire image to remain the same except for the pelican. So I'm just gonna remove this completely. So this is the original image and we wanna punch up the pelican. So we're going to add a levels adjustment. So I'm just going to click on this and I'm going to increase the darks. So I'm just going to slide this black slider to the right a little bit. But as I do that, you'll notice it's applying it to the entire photograph, which we only want it applied to the pelican. We don't want it on the water at all. And it would take us forever if we just painted in black like we did with the gentleman's face. It would take forever to paint around him and everything else. So we're going to do the reverse. So since this adjustment is being revealed everywhere because it's white. We are going to conceal the entire adjustment. So I'm gonna make sure black is sent to the back right now. This is a keyboard shortcut, so we're not painting right now. Make sure black is in the back, and then with this selected, this mask selected, hit Command Delete if you're on a Mac, or Control Backspace if you're on a PC, and that's just gonna fill that entire thing with black. So now this entire adjustment, it's as if it doesn't exist. We're hiding the entire thing. We're concealing it because it's filled with black. Now we want to reveal that adjustment on the pelican. And we reveal by painting in white. So I'm going to hit B on my keyboard. I'm going to make sure white is on the front right here. I'm going to zoom in really close. And once I start painting with the white, you can see he's getting darker because I'm on this layer and I'm revealing that adjustment on this layer. And I'm not going to take forever to do this. I'm just going to make him look kind of good. Get his feet. All right. You guys get the idea. 
All right, so he looks way better now than when he did before. Now he looks like he's this bright, vibrant bird. All right, so these are three quick examples of how to use layer masks in Photoshop. Um, and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please subscribe. I release a new tutorial every single Tuesday and sometimes Thursdays. So please subscribe and I will see you next week.